Sorry, I can't join today in person because yesterday hurt my knee too much, um, but I am here observing. I, I don't mean to participate online because I know that that's not everybody's preference, but I'm here observing. Thank you. Happy to have you. Okay, so next on the list, we're talking about uh, committee member attendance and minutes. So can do I have a motion to approve the minutes from last time? Or able to read my minutes? Um, I wanted to make an edit. Short board, we uh, had the uh, training um, bottom of the second to last paragraph, basically. Um, that what I was talking about was that Jeffrey Ward used to do an annual fair housing fair housing training, um, but that we had not offered in the past year or two. Um, mm -hmm. So if that was just the thing, is that it was an annual, I'll um, just go ahead and apply. But I, I hear that we might be doing that in the near future, so very cool. Um, you know, so I don't want to be back on the minutes. Okay, I updated that to Eastern run an annual. I know. I think that's like one of the required ones that has to be done. You want to put that in the Eastern Anything? Is there any other feedback, or do you guys see a moment to the review? Anything else? So I was just working out, like, with that edit, like, after we make that edit, do I do still do a motion? I'm so bad at that. Yeah, um, I can go ahead and make a motion with the edit. Um, mentioned. <laughs> okay. Can I get a second? Second. Thank you. Paul, oh no, that's you, that's your mother, that's right, that's Paul. Paul, you can put that in You can have motion, but you can direct the motion. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm ready to everyone in favor. I want to propose. Okay. Um, then we have committee member attendance on there too. We've made quorum every month for the past few months, which has been great because it hadn't been happening. I noticed that, yes. yes. But I know that we had talked about recruiting some more people. Um, so I think that's something that we're still still working on. And then we had talked about, um, I don't think there was any follow-up from that, but was there an action item on committee member attendance, or was that just on the agenda? I think that's the follow-up on whether or not you want to provide the Zoom option. Mm. Okay. okay, moving forward, since you have been achieving physical form. So I think we should hold, I personally think we should hold off on on that right now because we're going to form in person, but I'd be open to hearing what other people think about that. Mm -hmm. right, hold on. Yeah. Sure. Hold off on doing hybrid or keep it in there. But I'm open to other obviously. So we're removing this new option then. So I think um I heard during the recent CSC meeting is that the the idea of the hybrid in that situation is like audience only. Mm, okay. 
and, I, and, and like today's a good example of that, right? Victoria is unable to join us in person. Also, potentially, um, Teresa has joined yet, but she was unable to yeah. again. You know, where it is like an audience. Yeah, I think that's why I don't want to like, get rid of it. Like, I think like, people want to listen in. Okay. I guess to be able to vote and participate. There you go, vote and participate. Is that right? And then, um, yeah. Is that what are other committees doing? Good question. Um, so, some committees, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Um, some committees are doing hybrid. Okay. Um, I know DST, they do hybrid, so they'll have participation in forum when some people are online and present as well. Um, and they managed to have pretty decent um, in person and online attendance. And that that committee is always pretty smooth when it goes, when it, when it runs that way. Um, Lived experience is all in person. Uh, yeah. Sometimes you would have, like, I would join uh, online because I was sick that one time, but for the most, for the most part, I went in person. Uh, funders, committee, funders, council, they are hybrid as well. But providers is not. It's all online. It's all in person with um, online participation. Well, not online participation, but you can hear, you can listen in, but not have discussion. Um, so it's, it just really depends on what the structure of your committee has to be. So they offer hybrid and introduce a forum or virtual is not? For DSP, yes. Okay. Um, and for funders, yes. For providers, no. So just, I guess it really depends on the committee, what, they, what you want and like, what it to be structured. And I'm part of DSP as well. They all, we always try to come in person because it yeah. is a different engagement, yeah. right? Your your the pause is longer before they get back to you. They moved on to the next statement. You know, it's harder to dialogue. But uh, yeah. So, so moving yeah. towards keeping the Zoom option, but little to no participation, listening only, just to allow for the regular I do feel like our meetings move more smoothly when people are oh, here, and, here. And, and if we get through things a lot quicker. Because yeah. I remember when it was hybrid, and I, I felt like the meetings went a lot longer. So it's, listening only makes sense to me, and it does yeah. seem like, especially if you think of the pit meetings, those can be difficult with the online option. Yeah, so. Okay. It might be possible to, just create the meeting and have it be muted on entry and just stay muted, like there's no option to unmute yourself. Yeah. So we'll look into that. Okay. I don't think it'll be a problem with that. Like, yeah. 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 Or seeing their way. Yeah. 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 Or like, I get a vote on this. You know? yeah. I think everyone will respect that. But yeah. Okay. So that's an action item. So are we voting on that? Oh, okay. Is it right? And are we voting on that? Yeah. yeah. So I would like to propose an action that we make. Um, we maintain a hybrid with the online participation, not contributing to quorum, and be listening only. Does that cover it? Yes. Wait a second. Well, yeah. then you have you have to call for the question. Oh, any question? Yeah, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. There we go. So if if it's an issue and it should be voted on, will the per persons who are attending virtually be able to raise a hand or make some motion to, to, to vote if they can participate? I think no, I think that would be the yeah. Yeah, that would be the in-person forum. Okay. All right. The um I can make an I can add though that we would have the um like the open forum. Do we want to have you open that sometimes? Uh, we don't have an open forum typically in, in committees. No, it's just as a question. Yeah. In case somebody I heard somebody say it in the last, they attended the last week virtually because they were sick. And, and it seems a bit odd to lock somebody out of an opportunity to vote. The only reason they're not in attendance is because they're not feeling.
Yeah. I think if they didn't come in person, then that day they just wouldn't, the committee just wouldn't have formed. I feel like that happened to other committees when folks can't make it. So it would just be like a regular day when that committee doesn't make quorum. When it be all time. And I think there's a the reason that the online option is being discussed because this committee has had issues and had form present, even though you, you know, like said you made it for the last several months. So to eliminate the virtual option and to, to move it to a listening only would have to have is that required in order to vote on issues from us. If you're going to really move it to an online listening home and not a paper participant. I know we have people that feel strongly like hopefully oh, so it's, this has been like the continuous issue, I feel like. Because I know Teresa feels really strongly about being an in person. And I know too that, like I said, like I think I feel like we get a lot more done and a little more present when we're all here in person. Is she on yet? Is she on? No. She texted me specifically that she would come. Um, yeah, I'd be on Zoom. Did we do we do with everyone to kind of gauge their commitment and move forward with the committee and as a whole? I mean, I'm I'm all for whatever works for the group as long as it's consistent. Right. You know, um, that's just my my main concern. Well, I I know because I have been either attending virtually and I have full coverage to sort of remind us no, but. Um, I was engaged on whether or not I still want to participate. Um, and I said yes. And then uh, they said, what about attending in person? If it helps, they think it helps form sponsor the day. I would prefer to um, attend personally, like I said, 7, 37 minutes drive. But um, if I don't have the option to vote, then that would encourage a more in person presence at the meeting. Um, unless you we understand that if I go online, it's an installation on. Um, so, we had also talked about switching up the location to make it easier for uh, like to not do everything here in Amondale, too. Yeah. I know that's been discussed many times, but it's been a bit of I know. <laughs> I think we. I think we had asked for some other locations. I don't know if you guys remember that. Do you were able to research any other locations? I mean, you did not you reach out to Habitat for any Habitat for Humanity. Yeah, that was the one. Habitat, yeah. And I, we had had a side conversation about maybe the St. Pete offices if they had. Yeah. Which is off handy, which is still better than. But I don't know if you guys had it. I think it's I don't know. 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 Two one one, yeah. Two one one. And we've seen that the JWBA on meetings too, so that's a possibility. In the past, um, I've used libraries. They have, you know, it's free for nonprofits to reserve. Um, what else is up there? Uh, while we're brainstorming, then if we reach out to these potential locations. Are we looking to change the date if they only have a different day available, or we're pretty strict on this day and time? Consistency is everything. Yeah. yeah. If this is like, the day that you carve out this day, I would make it Okay. Yeah. So yeah. those options only if they have this day and time yeah. available. Then. Yeah. 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 Well, I, I don't want to get the proper rule, but it's a motion on the floor. <laughs> that still needs to be dealt with. There's, there's a motion. So do we want to? Well, yeah. yeah, you're 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 you, once, you're once, you, once you've had the discussion, right? The chair at any point can just call for the vote if you think it's better enough discussion. Then you say I'm call for the vote, and then then they have to vote. Yeah, I'll call for a vote. I don't know if people are going to vote, but I'll call for a vote on this right now. Yeah, but we got we got to 
either approve it or squash it. So. Yeah. Right. So you call for the vote. The motion was made motion pay. that you there is uh, an online option only to listen and to mm -hmm. in person. That was that was the motion I made. Yep.
Hunter Beckman, and there, I believe Esther Matthews had mentioned something about a toolkit under the AI. And is that toolkit more of like the, pop, the purpose, mission, kind of give you a guideline of how to run the actual committee and how to move things forward, or no. was it completely different? It is, um, it's attached to the, to the packet from today, which, who, who sent that out? Was it Megan? Um, is it on the packet? I don't think it was attached to this packet. It's full of, it's full of gold and protection. For, can I can bring it up though. Okay, yeah, so it's, it's from, oh, it's different. It's from yeah. Megan. Yeah, Megan, you sent it on, I just found it. I can't remember who sent it, so I couldn't find it. <laughs> so its purpose is for it's on the that agency to review oh, yeah. their own policies and how they operate through kind of like the fair lens. Like a housing first checklist. So there's a there's actually a checklist in the toolkit that providers are supposed to take back to their agency to see how they were, you know, kind of doing the right in their community. Um so yeah, it is the packet that was sent on the 20th. So the goal would be for DEI to provide follow-up training on the race equity toolkit then? So my questions are because I don't know how that was um, organized as much as when Avery was here. So I was a part of it. I did like a small section of the race equity toolkit presentation, but I don't know about the invites and if they were required to come and, and what the policing is on the toolkit because we I remember that conversation about having to follow up and kind of grading them using the end we were going to look at the boards as well I think on the committee um, so I think it's a great idea to follow up on it and to reinforce it but I think it goes back to do we have the power to do that it seems like this, this is an opportunity to go back there's, there's a lot of questioning speculation in the air about the BNI agenda, I think it would be good to go back and, and I see it's on the agenda to review the suggestions that came out of it that are included in the, in the uh, toolkit, the race echo toolkit, to see what B and E, B, e and I are left to, to do or to develop an agenda as it relates to the toolkit suggestions. But you're right, there were a lot of things that were suggested that, that this committee could do is look at uh, the board. Make up, see if they're there first. Uh, there, there were several things that came out of that racial toolkit, so we might need to go into the racial toolkit and pull those things out to then develop a, a DNI agenda. And then once you develop that agenda, then you can do some execution. And what would the execution look like if, for example, one of the agenda items was this board's makeup? doesn't reflect what it should or what the race equity toolkit suggests it should, what's an example of what DI would be doing or how would you move from there? And, and I, I think that's what needs to be developed. Because you know, we don't know for sure what those steps are. It, it might be, let me suggest, that it, it, it simply might be meeting whatever that board chair and see what kind of initiatives that they've had in place to do the and I recruit. It, it might be as simple as that. Okay. So, but you have to look at those items, those race, I mean, race and equity toolkit items that relate to the and I and to develop a strategy on how we monitor that progress. I don't think that's in place right now. I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. So, no, yeah, I was just given as like a best practice. Right. We're, yeah. gonna, we're gonna be moving this forward at some point. Here we are two years later. So it's almost like we, while we're simultaneously figuring out how do we stair-step this, we relaunch, and we probably honestly need to edit it first because some of the language is already outdated. I did like a fast scan of it. Um, edit it within a short time frame, get it back out to, to people, and then have part of that planning be next year's NOFO, like the social action grant with AP, there's a section, 10 of the 100 points is um, diversity of board. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, so I'm not saying that, because that's a, that's a big weight on one section, there's other things that obviously contribute to race equity, but like, if we're, if we're 
the COC is that if wanting to be that intentional with diversity or DEI, then that's kind of the move we have to make and promote through this group. That makes sense. But you can't just blast it in someone's face, yeah. right? You have to. I don't know if there's any questions of like just the ask. I know there's probably not any points, but is there an ask for diversity or for representation in the current outcome? Um, it, it just talks about how we're implementing as a, as a continuum of care uh, to bring up diversity, inclusion, and equity into our system. So that's kind of that best practice, yeah. right? And then it evolves to. It doesn't specifically mention the board, but it just it does ask how it works and how you do it. Okay. Okay. It sounds like we need to go back and look at this document and edit it a bit. I don't know if that means there's like a we edit it and relaunch, and, and I, I don't know if organizations, I mean, it's been a few years now, so I don't know if organizations remember this still kidding. Yeah. No, and that's I think it part of getting that back out. But do we want to edit it first? I think so. Yeah, I need to for sure. And then I also want to say, you know, there's people that do this um, do this well, and I'm pointing to you all for Center for Health Equity. <laughs> <laughs> She's like, yeah. She's like, yeah, I do it. Yeah. I was like, other people do it well. Okay. Yeah. So the Center for Health Equity, you know, they their training series is so robust, and there's a training right now coming out in the next month on. Um, on creating a diverse, you know, I don't want to call it. You know more about like, events happening at the center than I do. I love the events. I run the events. I'm all about them. I can't go to any of them. But, <laughs> um, let's see. That's diverse revenue. But ways to, oh, walking the walk with equity work. And it's about an equity lens to with employee satisfaction and things like that with health equity. So like there's constantly something happening in our community, so we don't need to necessarily recreate it. We yeah. Can push people Just around. promoting other things that are happening. <laughs> because there's not yeah, that's part of we have a whole capacity building series right now. Yeah. So that's we have it. grantees yeah. that got capacity building grants, but they're open to anyone. Because there's another one on September 17th that's about data yeah, that we're to do about, like our all everyone who applied for social action in the county we are sending the capacity oh, okay. building stuff to because hey, if you know whether or not you're applying next year or you have been awarded, this is something you could benefit from. Yeah. So I mean that's something that yeah we could do as a community too is just promoting other things that are happening in the, the county around equity because we are all volunteering to do this and it's probably good to promote other things that are happening and need to plan something for the so. So how would that look for, for this committee? Would we be sending an email blast to um, in order for them to see the events? I, I just don't know how that physically goes out. I don't even, so this is a question, maybe I should know. Does HLA have a newsletter that goes out? Yeah, yeah. yeah. yes. Several so months ago, oh, I should have a, like a DEI. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, because we could put, like, okay. we could put like, fail DEI in like, my section of that promoting other events or, you know, reminding of the toolkit or, I mean, I'd be fine doing, like, editing the toolkit and relaunching and doing, like, a, another, like, webinar-ish type thing, too. I think it would be helpful. I'll give you an idea about that. Yeah, the document is huge. I think updating would be good with the new laws and everything that's changing. Yeah, so much, so much happens. All of this anyway. Um, so are we looking to do that on, you just do it on the outside of this community and come back and chat about it? Or do you want to like assign sections for people to, it's like 50 pages or something. I think that's why I, I don't know if you want to split it up to have everyone focus on separate sections or Everyone wants to reappoint themselves anyway, so you'll read it all. Okay, we we'll should read it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Assigning is just I don't know. Uh, sure. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a note for us, HLA, to send that to the rest of the committee members that were not here so they know that that's kind of a homework assignment. It'll send it to everybody. Yeah. Oh, sorry. It'll send out a point with this recent 
Oh, yeah, yeah. I just meant to emphasize, like, make sure they know that this was something that was mentioned for the committee members to be looking at. Uh, I know really a long, long process last time we went through our toolkit. Uh, so, I, I, you know, I, I don't want to redo that work. Yeah, yeah, no. I want to look at it through a different lens mm -hmm. in terms of, you know, getting and changing. Well, yeah. that stuff is no longer relevant, but not to reduplicate that process. No, no, no. no. I, I think it's just like looking through to, like, are there any updates that need to be made? I don't think it's something that, no, I don't want to recreate this either. Yeah. There was a lot of work that went into yeah. it. It's just like since a few years have passed, like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Laws have changed yeah. since right. then. Just reading through that one. Okay. Yeah. Well, even some of the language, there's a pretty large glossary, you know, that we were mm -hmm. learning as we created the glossary. We're like, oh, or at least I was. I, um, but there's, I'm sure that's evolved. So. And at, since I'm at the foundation now, we have our own glossary as well in these racial equity terms, so I mean, we don't have to like, reinvent them, just depending on the things around there. Okay, so that will be on the next. You want to revisit on the next agenda then next month? Three, four months is enough for two um, months to on the next agenda. Maybe not because we might have a little bit less time, especially because we pushed this meeting. Yeah, let's. Okay. Can we do October? Yeah, October. Yeah, October. October. Okay. Let's see what discuss. Um, my only thing with that would be. Do we want to do like half of it by next month and the other half? Or do we want to, I just don't want anyone to come in two months and not, not have any feedback. Um, TV, are you, or is Megan, who's sending the follow-up now from this? Oh, I Would you just send a follow-up email to everyone just with the toolkit attached and just say what we talked about? Yes. And then I think then we can probably like start the discussion next month, but finalize in October and we'll be fine. Thank you. Any word on the ACLU contact? Yeah, that's on my next one. Yeah. 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 You got a text right now? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And did we want to secure a spot at a board meeting for a person, or are we going to wait until we have someone for sure? Oh, uh, yeah, we don't have to wait Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I didn't know how far out we needed to reserve um, in terms of their availability at the meetings. For like, why well, not when Victoria was saying, oh, do we want to save a spot for the DI to present somebody? Um, oh, but then usually their meetings are booked like pretty far ahead of time, so I'm not sure. Do you know? Well, we have um, a meeting next week on the 6th, but I think that that agenda is yeah. pretty, right. pretty soon, so it wouldn't, it wouldn't be until maybe October. Okay, so we're looking at October spot. If you want something on the agenda, I can't. <laughs> Okay, so another goal for October. Sorry, I think the next board meeting is November. It's every other month. Oh, okay. oh November. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah. And then the fair housing training, we already touched on that, but we're looking to see if it will be provided or? No, our October. Our October. Yes, I'm looking for a, a location right now. Okay, so awesome. yes. You said Yes, October 10th. Okay. Yeah. Thank you both for working on that. Awesome. And then the race equity toolkit, which we already discussed as well. So that will be something that's reviewed ideally halfway by September meeting, with any working discussion, and then Hopefully finalized at the October meeting, which honestly I would I would not bulk our agenda moving forward because like it took a long time. There is equity to get to like the discussion will be majority of the meeting. So oh yeah, this meeting used to be I think two hours long. Yeah, like <laughs> six eight months. Still can't right? Okay, I guess 
you were even at, I think I was even at the HLA when the toolkit started. It was yeah. a lot. <laughs> and so I would just keep that in mind with any action. If anything else you wanted to add, just keep it in mind. That's it for task follow up. Or, oh, I'll throw one in there too, actually. I sent an email informally introducing Sherry and Megan, who are new to HLA. Um, they will be stepping in as DI is up here, acting again, mostly. Yeah, I'll be mean, taking minutes primarily and setting up the busy okay. Okay. So I just wanted to formally introduce that to you all. So I'll be attending, but I will not be a liaison. Can we give some background to that too? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. 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 So, I think it's important. I'm sorry. So we, we do a lot of contracts that are specifically stated whoever is um, staffed under that grant cannot work directly with DEI. Um, and I think, and one of the DCF positions, contract. DCF contract, um, and TD works under that contract. So we have to have her um, still participate, but not essentially be the liaison or the facilitator of it. Yeah. However, um, we did hire uh, Megan, who is our COC planning um, coordinator, so she does a lot of our meetings and a lot of our information. Um, and also Sherry Haltbacher, who is our director of quality performance, um, that they, their positions are not affected. So they will be um, overseeing the facilitation of the, of the committee and also assisting with whatever the committee needs. However, TV, since she has a lot of the history, she'll still kind of participate, but not necessarily be involved in a lot of the work. Uh, so that this Ooh, is why I'm in the state space. No more, no, no more <laughs> my name or anything. So we have, to, we have to kind of play around that, um, make sure that we, we're still participating um, but not showing that we're doing it so directly with, with the committee. And I think that this is something uh, that the Board of Directors had mentioned prior. When Teresa Jones had mentioned it, uh, the lack of participation of uh, different uh, entities or providers because of the same reason. Some of their contracts have that language. So there was a mention, do we change the name of the committee? Do we keep it? Like, how do we increase participation uh, from other providers uh, without getting them, per se, in trouble, right? Um, or getting them in a situation where they want to participate, but they are contractually cannot participate. Um, so we have a way to work around that. Maybe other providers don't have a way to do that. So there was a, a discussion about, do we change the name of the committee? Do we keep it? Do we just Going, um, do we have a work around to work around that? Um, so that, that was something that was mentioned as well. Okay. But this is the reason why I'm here. Well, that's why I was too, too, too early for the governor is eating, me and I train, everybody's come up with a way to be a work around. Right. So they don't jeopardize the state funding. Right. Those who receive state funding from the government are on the government office of the government, are those who most Jeffrey who's in that funding. So if part of that funding is from this committee, then I would suggest changing it to the, the, the change the EI. Because it's just puts you in jeopardy. So, so. And it should that I mean even the diversity officers across the state will change the title of their position from the diversity office to the equity officer or justice officer. So. Yeah, like, what is that to us? What is the word? Is it just diversity that is equity still a word? Like, I, I don't know. What the, there has been so it, all three words are no no words now. <laughs> and I mean, that, that's frustrating. And even, and, and I think that there's so much. My previous role as CFPH and the managing entity was overseeing the DEI committee, or, and then and we went through a whole host of changes. We became the organizational development committee, tried to, you know, whitewash the language quite a bit, and um, and so it lost a lot of its meat uh, at that point, uh, but uh, we tried to keep the, the same spirit. One of the problems is that with all of the I think that the rumors and the fear that comes about, then people start creating issues too. So like words such as disparity became a no-no word. I feel like every single one, it just started like we started creating a list like, oh, this is ridiculous. Um, so, 
that those three words are the, the main red flags for... There's also an additional law that you know started out with schools, but it also expanded to all businesses uh, across the state cannot require DE. I thought that one got struck down. About Did that? I mean, it was the business specifically. I think. Right. right. Yeah. I know that it, it was. Right. It was right. Right. Yeah, but, but businesses are smart enough to change yeah. the yeah. their approach uh, to it or the advertising of it. Uh, and, and for real, that that whole. DNI and I instructor community feels under attack and very observed. So some of them have even changed careers. And I'm gonna say he hired a direct um, the first year officer that within a few months. It's just um, a lot of pressure being put on, um, particularly as it relates to funding around these issues. So you just have to be strategic as you yeah. all of them yeah. and creative in order to get to those issues. There's a the the, the nonprofit leadership, uh, oh goodness, nonprofit leadership center of Tampa Bay. I believe they have a group that's been meeting around this with a lot, all the nonprofits. Some of them are not state funded and looking at ways to leverage those that are funded in other ways and, and, and partnering up. So it's just um, some ideas come out of that, but. And I don't know how much HUD is still speaking to those issues. I mean, but that's on a federal level, so it's another a whole other uh, level. Uh, what is what are their uh, stance of the mental health and I don't know if it's going to be uh, strong over there. So, that, so <laughs> that, that still has that requirement. Yeah. And they're not they they still require it for our counties to have it. I think that's just a state. Right, yeah, no, yeah. Yeah, so so we, we still have to say yes, we you know we have a DI, we still meet, we have a committee. Um, so I, so it's kind of like two things. We have are required to have it, but then the state says we can't. So, you know, we have to figure out ways to be creative. For for how you have to show that we are for advancing racial equity and marginalized group, you know, yes. being represented. Absolutely. Using the words DEI, not necessary. That that's the that's the play there. But yeah. what are some of the names that people are using if not to you know, or some of the other like work around? When I was in Manatee County, we had to change our DEI committee name to Community Engagement Committee, which it's a very off brand. <laughs> but it's a Was 
the to have a dialogue about the fear. So to have someone come and, and discuss like what, what what you guys are just navigating the two these position for people to understand that there can be participation and what does that look like. Um, and then also, because the guidance they gave this committee was that you guys are completely good to go forward with this, there's no problems, um, you know, that was kind of the feedback we got, and we were hoping that would go to the larger board. Okay. So kind of like dispelling some myths. Maybe. Yeah, dispelling the myths, like you said, like, the, the work was closely associated, so then it became a no-no, right? But that, like, that discussion is with, with uh, equity law ones. Someone 
someone who's in multiple committees, I think that might be a good work shop in and of itself. Just yeah. like, here's all your the, <laughs> the policies of all the committees you participate in. And we are getting into the takeaways from committee planning meeting. I just wanted to move down to that. I just wanted to make sure we're <laughs> Yeah, I think that would be great if we could review all of those yeah. materials. I agree. I'm thinking now of like making a booklet or something, especially when we're recruiting other members, something to provide them with, to yeah. familiarize them with the committee. Can we do that at the next meeting? The next committee meeting? Yeah. I would like to we can set up like the original. Toolkit and our um, and documents related to the DEI committee. Yeah, it would be great to have some streamlined documents, though. Yeah. I know we want to have an ask for the board because right now we're like, how do we do this? Yeah, yeah, uh, but we'll have that ready. And we um, we are using the onboard dashboard as well, specifically for chair for chair um, mm -hmm. for chairs and vice chairs for each committee. So they can go, you can go in, and we can have all of those items okay. available to you. But yes, we will. We will have that available. Are there any other things that happened at the committee planning meeting that you think that we need to know? Um, I think the most important thing that was discussed was the means of communication establishing that, creating that one page summary and um, making sure that each committee establishes what we did, what, what, what this committee did earlier, what's the hybrid or versus in person, because I know that that was a conversation that was had. Um, some committees prefer in all in person, some committees prefer hybrid. So making sure that that is, that is established in each committee. Um, and, and then we also get clarity, and I think it might be in the updated ones, but I haven't seen them in a while. Which ones are require sunshine? I know you guys got rid of it as a entity, but there's provider. You know, there's um, like this. I think the COC board has a lot of representation, public representation. So, like, I think this committee doesn't apply. So, like, we can talk between meetings about the work, but I don't think that's something some can. So, right? I don't think so. From what I think, what I know, it's like not following everything. Yeah, I think it it lapsed. I'm sorry, I found my notes. Um, there was also a conversation about having a COC strategic plan. Um, it's something that they wanted to look into, making sure that we have a COC annual calendar specifically for major events like PIT, NOFO, um, hurricane meetings, policy reviews, making sure that, like I mentioned, the chairs have the agendas beforehand, making sure that they have that one page summary to take to the board of directors. Um, I'm going to discuss forum. Yeah, that, that was in the main, um, the main conversation. And also assisting with the advocacy committee. So if any of our other committees are requesting action items to the advocacy committee, what does that look like? What do you want them to advocate for? Um, and what do you want um, things to be moving forward? Yeah, that's essentially what this is best. And then just the, the flow of communication up to the board of directors from the chair. Homelessness in terms of their um, movement in our communities. 
I don't know why one time PTSD was a, had some prohibition or mm -hmm. what having some discussions around homeless riding the buses. I've noticed uh, strategic moves by municipalities to take inches out of parks. Mm -hmm. You know, so there's been a whole a whole lot of things that are going on um, that basically discriminate against homeless as, as it relates to public accommodation. Are there any discussions at all on the board level as it relates to those issues? Not that I've heard of recently. No. I'm, I'm wondering where where were those discussions be had if not with you know with the COC. Mm -hmm. I mean because no that's the that's the problem is nobody giving voice mm -hmm. to the homeless community. Um, and I often hear from um, uh, like I live in an apartment complex and and I barbecue sometimes on a little parking lot and and homeless people will come by from time. Of course, food is cooking, but they come by. And they'll say, how can you do that? He said, because, man, the police don't be playing, <laughs> you know, when it comes to us, right. you know, hanging out somewhere. How, how do you get away with that? And so, and again, I, I see, I, I used to see where some homeless were hanging out and, and people would drive by in their cars and open trunks um, and just offer them up food or other amenities. Mm -hmm. And the police essentially moved that area, you know, moved benches from that area. It was a I never saw them, you know, those homeless being disruptive in any way. Mm -hmm. and, and, and now they you can't find them because they moved them and they moved them on. So mm -hmm. I'm, I just wanted to hear somebody out there give a voice uh, to that community. We're addressing issues maybe in meetings, right. but there's no real advocacy going on in the community in terms of equity. Yeah. Um, I think that's the intent of the uh, advocacy committee mm -hmm. to amplify that message that a lot of us that some people can't again um but that's a brand new committee and then also the um uh, lived experience committee but those are very i think in my opinion they're still very small and kind of quiet groups well the advocacy still hasn't officially Establish itself. I think. Oh, see, I thought I met once already. Right? So they, they have met, mm -hmm. but it's it's as a work group. Okay. They are, there's not an official chair and vice chair. They haven't been voted on, and okay. they have to go through the process first. But there have been two meetings already with the advocacy committee, mm -hmm. and I think it's more of establishing the chair, the co-chair, mm -hmm. or the vice chair, and making sure that they have a purpose of, of what. Yep. what they want to move forward. And I think having that work group last week with the purpose and the one page for each app for each committee will drive yeah. a lot of those conversations for yeah. them. That would be a good example of an action that only bring to advocacy. Right. Mm -hmm. Because I, I noticed the you know when there's severe weather alerts um, that municipalities will all want to send out communications uh, to homeless communities that these shelters are open, you know, in weather or whatever. And, and uh, again, I'm wondering where's that communication going to? Is it getting to the communities? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's probably a word about more than anything because it, you know, most of them don't have televisions or radios, you know what I'm saying, to really get that message. And so I'm wondering how is, is there some kind of mechanism that has a systematic um, approach to getting that message down to that community? I was also just thinking about targeting generally as you're talking about that because I remember talking to people and them saying, you know, like obviously it's illegal to have like an open container in public, but first Friday St. Pete, you see right. people like all over the streets, not even the designated area, but they're like me as someone who's like, you know, sleeping on the street, like I'm going to be targeted immediately. <laughs> and pride goes along with it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like all, you know. So I did find the policies and procedures for DEI that was last updated in 2020. I will send this out in the call. Awesome. Thank, Thank you so well. much for doing this. I, I think this is the latest one, but I'll check on that. Yeah. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So is there any more discussion that you want to have on any of these things before we adjourn? And no, I'm just going to say with the is that talk about like the committee participation and all of that? Because I know within the past like year, year and a half, we, we had this, when we started this discussion on hybrid and quorum and all of that, we did make some amendments. Yeah, I thought that that was part of this where it said like 
fifty percent plus one or something. Yeah, that's I'll, part of this one. Right? I look for it too. That might be separate. Okay, I was like twenty twenty. That's too far. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I know we had talked about that. I'm not saying this. We, yeah, we didn't make those kind of changes like a year. year Attendance, yeah. Oh, oh. But yeah, it might be layered. <laughs> might be in a committee yeah. update or something like that. Maybe somebody might be Does anybody want to make a motion? I mean, Susie, would you like to recommend somebody make a motion? Would somebody like to make it to adjourn? <laughs> Who would like to make a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. So move. All right. <laughs> All right. 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 I'm glad that we have some like work actually ahead of us too that we're like okay we have some points yeah. and stuff that we can do. Yeah, that's good. I tried to recruit um, somebody. I'm gonna have to So can <laughs> I got I, you? I got for someone to come <laughs> from either the ACLU or uh, might be SPLC or another organization, probably it's ACLU. Is there a virtual option for the for the board meeting if they can't make it in person, or do they need to be here in person? Because like the person that she's thinking of is in Orlando. Oh. I think it would hold more weight. Um, yeah.